Today we're going to look at making short bolts into long bolts. Let's do it. So we've all been in the garage looking for a bolt to replace. Nope, not one long enough in there. It's not in there. Ah, those are all metric. Those won't work. Fine. Nope. Down here. Nope. Nothing's going to work. Way too big. I mean, just nuts. The toolbox you keep just for long bolts. Nope, nothing in there is going to work. I think it's that bolt. Nope. Nope. Almost, not quite. So I thought extending bolts was a pretty common thing for people to do. Apparently not. At least I couldn't find a video on it or anybody talking about it. So the other day I broke a bolt. I've done this many a times and I just spliced it, put it back together, installed it, put a picture on Instagram and Facebook and people said, hey, do a video on that. That's awesome. So I'm gonna. So this is the bolt I had. It was about seven and a half inches long. Snapped off when I was removing it you know, or extracted that, but then it was too short to grab the threads. So I just took the remainder part of the bolt and attached a new lower half. So for this demo, I'm gonna take these two bolts right here. Let's say I need a, uh, what is that? Say I have to have at least a five inch bolt and this one's only four and three quarters. So this one's just not long enough to grab. So I need to make a longer bolt out of these two. I really don't wanna to go to the, uh, the bolt store and spend $4 on a new bolt. I just wanna get it done. Let's do it. So we take these two bolts and now we just have to, this is the same thing you'd see people if they were shortening axle shafts or something at home. We're gonna splice it. So we're gonna notch each one halfway through and I need at least half inch, but probably closer to about an inch of space of overlap before we weld them. So I'm just gonna notch them real fast and we'll go from there. So now you'd lay them together and you'd see how much overlap you want to do. Shoot a little long and go from there. We want we ended wanted to end up with about a five inch bolt. So we'll just come all the way down to there and we'll just mark it real fast on each one. It's really not that crucial. But now I'm going to split it in half, but I don't want to split it in half because I got the thickness of my blade. So I want the thickness of my blade to be on the halfway mark. And so the side I'm cutting off will be thinner. You'll see. Now for my line, I actually want to come, you can do it at 90, but for the best, I think it's best to kind of cut it at a 45 from this point over to here. So now I just got to do the same thing on this one. You could just do 90 and 90, no big deal, but now I'm just going to mimic it on this bolt. Okay, each bolt has this little notch taken out and you're left with this. And they don't fit together perfect. They never will with a hand grinder. But now we take a piece of angle iron that's st fairly straight. That groove will be straight enough. And we're going to lock them in. I did make sure that when I hold these together, no part is thicker than my original bolt. You know, so we should be just fine if there's a little bit of gap. You know, I got a little bit of a wobble in there, but that's what welding's for. It'll fill all that in. So we're just gonna put this in, put this in. We're gonna clamp this down. Clamp that down. And for this, I'm going to, I'm gonna TIG weld it, but MIG weld work just fine. Um, you could oxy settling weld it. You could flux core weld it. Uh, a bolt this small, the only thing you probably couldn't do is stick weld it. Now, there's a couple places I do not want to weld. So of course I'm gonna weld this whole seam, but the one place I do not want to weld is if I weld across here, I don't want to come across the back here. I do not want to, mess with this parent metal right in here. So I'm gonna weld across here, here, around, but I'm not gonna to touch this here or this down here. But we're just gonna TIG weld it in. So 
So now we just take it and we just grind it smooth so it's the same diameter all the way across. And if we have any poor porosity or anything, we just come back and tack weld it again. But that's about it. Should be nice and straight and ready to go into service. Let's grind it down and see what we end up with. Do not quench it. Fight the urge. Do not douse this. Let this cool down naturally. Uh, Bolter heat treated, yes. But by you quenching it, you're never gonna you're gonna harden it, but then you're trying to temper it, you're never gonna get back to how it was. Just leave it as is. This part of the bolt is actually about 25% has about 25% greater surface area than the threads. Down inside the threads is the weakest part. So even if you reduce the strength by doing this by 25%, the bolt is overall the steel it's the exact same strength but um we'll just grind that down and go from there there we go it's a bolt it's a longer bolt from two shorter bolts i will say most of the time i've done this every time i've ever done this i've used at least a grade five grade eight this one was a grade one or two the bottom of the barrel the worst of the worst and i did get some porosity in one of the bolts um it was probably just it's probably this one the lower half it was just made out of the cheapest, cheapest stuff. There's no stampings or markings on it. The other one is a vintage bolt, uh, but there's no markings on it either. So one of the bolts gave me a little bit of porosity issues and kept, you know, bubbling up. But it is, it's a strong, it's a bolt. You know, generally bolts in, in applications aren't stressed out to their max, you know. Generally there's a huge safety factor, a two times, four times safety factor. Um, so even if you reduce the strength in half, it's still going to be plenty ample for your application. Obviously, I wouldn't put it in a scenario where my life depended on it, but it's going to work. I use these, I've used this in applications in the past for things like um, uh, alternator bolts. You know, that long bolt that goes in your alternator and, and Fords and Chevys and stuff like that. I've used that for this. Um, I've used it for wheel weights on tractors where I've needed, you know, 16, 18 inch long bolts that you can't even get. Yeah, you can go buy some all thread, but all threads you generally grade one or two, the worst of the worst. And so if you can take some nice longer bolts of grade five or something, put them together, you be way stronger than you would with a grade two. But I also have a video on how to shorten them. You know, if you cut the threads, how when you cut the threads off with the zip disc and you can't get the nut on, I have a video on how to remedy that whole thing where you need to slice it off and the nut just goes on and off just like a factory edge. Go watch that. Thanks, guys. What are you doing? You getting it all? <laughs>